And welcome, welcome to today's session. Uh, this is Nelly Deutsch, and this is a special added section uh, that I thought would be useful for um, those who want to practice to uh, MOOC and Moodle at the same time. So if you could just add in the chat box where you're from and we'll get started. Of course, this is being recorded, so it's going to be added to the course area. So we've got uh, Venezuela, and let's see if I can guess. We've got Poland, we've got Hungary, and I'm not sure about Rosie. And let's see if anybody else that I uh, missed there. Oh, Serbia, sorry. Why did I think Hungary? Maybe because um, Josefina is a very uh, generic name in Europe. And we've got, uh, let's see. So where are you from, uh, Rosie? We've got Germany, that's right. Okay, so today we're gonna be doing a lot of things. So uh, let's take it one step at a time. Because you're here in the live session, it's your session. That means that I'm not going to be talking in general, but specifically to your uh, needs, whatever they happen to be. So feel free to add in the chat box anything that uh, you'd like help with as I go through um, the slides. So this is Moodle MOOC 4. It started in June 2013. And this is the fourth one. The MOOCs uh, take place three times a year in June, October, and February. So the next one is going to be in October, and uh, we're getting ready for that. So far, we've had uh, lots of presentations. This week, uh, we're scheduled to have uh, Ludmila Smirnova tomorrow. Uh, we've got uh, Vicki Hollett, Jason R. Levine, Joel Josephson from the UK, and uh, our speaker from uh, Bolivia. I think I've got everything. Oh, and Justin, sorry, Justin from uh, New Zealand originally, but in, Cor in Japan, who's going to be talking about uh, Poodle and the uh, microphones that you've seen there in the editor and also the uh, videos. So um, I've added some of these sessions, so you can see them here. And they are, okay, starting tomorrow with uh, Dr. Ludmila Smirnova. She's gonna be talking about the value and process of creating collaborative learning communities. And then we've got Vicki Hollett on creating videos. Uh, Vicki does an amazing job with her husband, and uh, she also has Jason in there and some other people, guests, and of course, uh, their dog. And then um, on June 18, we've got Joel Josephson, who's a TED Talk speaker and very involved in the community in Europe. Lots of projects in the European uh, arena. And then we've got uh, Justin Hunt, as I mentioned, and Rosemary Ribera Ferrier from uh, Bolivia. And last but not least, on the 20th, We've got Jason R. Levine. All right, so uh, let's um, go through. Um, I think you all know me here, but if uh, this is being recorded, today is June 15. This is a little bit about me and my face for peace. If you're interested, it's on Facebook, and it's a really incredible initiative. This week, we're starting activities, okay? So we've already talked about activities, so I'm not going to go through the activities today, but uh, link is available. I think this is the one on activities where I went through as uh, you're still in the same area. I think Thomas mentioned it. It's uh, the Moodle practice area, same place where you're practicing the resources. And of course, you're turning editing on. Some of your uh, video tutorials are absolutely amazing. Okay, so there's, uh, we've gone through that on the resources. Now uh, it's going to be the activities in order to engage our students. 
and that's what it looks like once the editing is on. And these are the activities, a lot of them. So you'll have a chance to try them all out. And if you're not sure of anything, there are explanations. Don't worry if you can't get the SCORM or SLOODL or any of these others going. Pick what interests you and that you find uh, useful. And the, the most important part, I think, is reflecting on the process. It is about the process and not about getting there, but the way. All right, so um, activities. We're going to be discussing activities a little bit but we're mostly going to discuss user administration. How many of you um, have had teacher rights on the Moodle? If you could just give me a thumbs up. Have you had teacher rights on the Moodle? Outside this course? Okay, great. Excellent. Okay, so quite a few of you. Hi, Rosie, you're here. Okay, um, great. All right, you should all have had it if you've been in the course. Okay, great. Well, there's something called user administration. Anybody know anything about user administration before I get started, just so I get a feel of uh, what you know and what you don't know? User administration. Everything is administration on Moodle, as I think you must have uh, noticed by now. It's discussion, form administrator, course administrator, user administrator, glossary administrator, book administrator. Everybody's an administrator. It really is an honored position. Uh, administrator, user administrator is not for the administrator of the Moodle. It's for teachers and managers. Okay, but that's an excellent question, Isabel. Okay, the word is administrator but it's not really an administrator. It's just a teacher or a manager of a course. It's not the uh, manager of the whole Moodle website. Okay, so we're going to be talking about enrollment methods and groups. How many of you have heard of grouping and groups and putting people in groups? If you can give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Have you heard of an enrollment method called groups, where you enroll people and you place them in groups. And Moodle does it automatically. Of course, Moodle does everything automatically. You just need to click and decide what you want. You haven't tried it, Kirsten. It's really a lot of fun, especially for English language teachers or language teachers in general, because it really offers you a chance to put people in groups and have them work together in some activities like discussion, discussion is an activity, and then some activities to have them work together as a class. So it's like breakout rooms in the live online classes. The groups is a chance for everybody to get to know one another, especially when you have 2,000 students in a course or a MOOC. It's a great, and you can group them into groups of four, even if you have 2,000, yes or in groups of tens or twenties or hundreds. So it's almost like a subclass or a subcourse inside a course, exactly to collaborate. So it's really a nice feature. And the fact that Moodle does it automatically makes life easy. All right, so uh, this is a little bit of um, review here, okay, when you get into Moodle for Teachers. But before we start the review, uh, let's uh, go into our I think it's here. Oh, it's not here yet. All right, so courses on Moodle. If that's how you go in on Moodle for Teachers, can someone add that in the chat box? What is the uh, website link to Moodle for Teachers? Breadcrumbs. <laughs> oh, breakout rooms, yes. No, breakout rooms is when you go into different rooms. Groups is when you are divided in an asynchronous, it's not a live session, it's a an asynchronous kind of format. So groups are for courses and breakout rooms are for live classes, whether face-to-face -face or online. Thank you, Isabel. So let me check that. Yes, 30, excellent. Okay, we're gonna have a warm-up in a minute, 
Okay, and these are the two courses, Moodle for Beginners and Moodle for Non-Beginners. And if you want, if you go into your login, you can find your courses under My Courses. How many of you have tried this, My Courses, in the menu? Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down if you've tried this. It's a great feature. Moodle has a lot of great features, but there's so many things that it's hard to really uh, use them all. But try just so that you are. Okay, so now for the warm up. We've got five questions for the warm up today. And um, are you ready? Getting your fingers warmed up here, um, your keyboard, and of course, your skill in going from one area to another and checking your browser. So, this is really an exercise in checking your browser. Okay, now what's in your browser, of course? What is always in our browsers? A URL, okay, or a link. All right, so what is the link of today's presentation? Oh, look at that, that's very fast. Uh, but I don't think that's a uh, presentation there, Kirsten. It doesn't say tutorial, it should say tutorial. That is, uh, that's the link to number five. So let's start with number, one okay number one I like that number one so it's a tutorial what is the link to today's presentation in order to get that you have to go into the Moodle for teachers oh sorry the Moodle MOOC Moodle MOOC 4 Moodle MOOC 4 and then you go into after you go into Moodle MOOC 4 you go into the course where and in the course where you should be able to get the tutorial for today okay so while you're doing that I'll have a sip of my coffee so let's see let's see let's see uh, Josephina went off in order to go on. So you're going to the Moodle MOOC link and then courseware and then tutorial for today. What coffee? Uh, you don't want to know. <sighs> Poison. <laughs> Very strong. It's a capsule kind of coffee, homemade. Oh, I think we got it there. Okay, let's check that and see. It looks good, Jarek. In fact, it's perfect. Okay, so that's the link for today. Very good, Jarek, thank you. So the steps were Moodle MOOC 4, and then Courseware, and then the tutorial, excellent. Next question, number two. Uh, what is the link of your Moodle course? You should be used to that. I think that um, Joseph, no, who was it that added it before? Isabel, that's right, it was Isabel, yes. Isabel added it, so that's correct. Okay, that's the link to the Moodle for, is it beginners or non-beginners? Let me check. 30, I think, is um, the non-beginners. No, it's the beginners. Okay. So 29 is the non-beginners. Okay, anybody from non-beginners here? Maybe there aren't any non-beginners. Anybody non-beginner? No, 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 no. Okay, so... Uh, you have sent you some Venezuelan. Oh, uh, my husband usually brings me Colombian or, oh, Brazil. He's going to be in Brazil uh, next month. So maybe I'll get uh, coffee from Brazil. All right. So next question. I see that you're kind of uh, passive today. Next question. Number three, four, a thousand dollars. All right. Let's see who's going to move for a thousand dollars. Oh, wow. Kirsten, that's excellent. Wow. Um, that's for number three. What is the link to the Moodle MOOC on WizIQ? That's a long link. 
but that's from your browser. You did it. You got it from your browser, but there's another place for it, and that's at the uh, right-hand side. That's right, Jarek. But that's excellent, Kirsten. That's what you have in your, uh, in your browser window. Perfect. Thank you. All right, next question is the link to the Moodle for Managers. Okay, Moodle for Managers. Notice these are the same questions you had last time, so you could cheat. Okay, 32. Yes, that's right, Tom. Very good point. The long link is for those who are enrolled. Those that are not enrolled would not have that. Definitely. That's right. They would have the short one. So true. So what is the link to this session? Okay, that's the final question, number five. What's the link to this session? Let's see. I think we had at the beginning, didn't we ask this? Ah, oh, the presentation. I think some people did it right. We had number five because some of you started with number five. Excellent. All right, so let's continue. All right, so activities on Moodle uh, could only be available to teachers with teaching rights. Some teachers do not have teacher rights. And uh, if you want to be able to add users, in most cases, you need to be a manager of a Moodle course, but it's possible to give teachers uh, the right to also add users. Okay, and uh, this is what we did in week, you did in week two. You went into the into the manager's area and the community practice area in the manager. Oh, you haven't done this yet. Sorry about that. You're going to go into the community manage a practice area because in order to view the user, you have to be a manager, okay, in this uh, Moodle site, okay? So in next week, you'll all be able to practice a lot of amazing features that in most schools you will never see. But if you have your own Moodle, you will see it. Okay, so uh, you're getting a lot of information here. And we went over this last time when we talked about the blocks. Okay, so you're familiar with all this. And of course, don't forget to turn on the light so that you see the editing tools. Okay, this was about the blocks and we had talked about. It. Now we're going to go into users. Okay, now this is, notice it says course administration, administration. Now, depending on your rights, you always have administration. How many of you have seen administration on the left side in your account in the course? Okay, give me a thumbs up if you have seen administration. Okay, let's see if some of you have. If you haven't, thumbs down. You have, Tom. Well, I expected that you would know that. Okay, anybody else? Everybody has administration. Everyone. Yeah, no, Rosie. Rosie, what course are you in? Moodle for beginners or Moodle for non-beginners? Everybody has administration. Everyone. Oh, you're both of them? Okay. Everyone has administration. That's how it's done. Moodle gives you administration, but depending on your rights. <laughs> it's small. Yes, it's, it's not that great. You're right, Tom, but it's still administration. You're still an administrator, and that's what makes it great. All right, so I'm going to screen share. Uh, let me get rid of my uh, webcam, and um, I'm going to screen share. It's going to take a few seconds for it to initialize, as I always say. And then we're going to take a look at it, and then we'll go through the slides. I think your the, the chat freezes uh, when the, it initializes, but I'm not sure. Are you able to write in the chat? I wonder. 
you should be able to write in the chat during the um, the screen sharing. Okay, so let's go. All right, so I'm going to go into the Moodle right here. Okay, here's the Moodle. And um, well, I'll ask you, where am I? Okay, that's a good question. Where am I? Okay, I'm gonna look at the breadcrumbs. Notice here, this is where I am. The last place in the breadcrumb. And the right, the right side of the breadcrumb is where I am. So I'm in Moodle for beginners. Okay. Now I'm going to go into week three, week four, so I can access the Moodle for managers. Okay. And right now it's hidden from you, but um, I can still go there. Okay, because it's not hidden from me. And then here it is, Moodle for Managers. And here I go. You're right about the link. It's 32. There it is. You're all enrolled, but you can't do very much. You can just look at it. Okay, even right now, uh, you can go in and look at it, but you won't see the screen sharing. So I'm going to change my role to a manager because right now I have too many rights. Okay, so this is what you will see. Okay, this is the administration that you will see. You will see course administration, turn editing on, edit settings. You'll be able to edit the course settings. But if you make any changes, change it back. Otherwise, we're going to have a mess. And I see Rosissa is here. Very good. And then users. We're interested in the users right now. Okay, so let's click on users. And then we're prompted with, notice under users, enrollment methods and groups. Now we're going to go into enrollment methods. So you see what's here. Okay, these are the enrollment methods. There's manual, and I can edit, notice the editing here. And there's guest, which I turned off, I can turn it on. But that means that anybody will come in, and we don't want that. Well, at least not in this course. And then, notice here, there's Course Meta. That means that I brought all of you, I enrolled you automatically. Everybody from Moodle for Beginners is enrolled automatically, 94 of you. And 88 non-beginners are enrolled automatically. Now let me show you add method. Before I enroll anybody, I have to decide on a method. Do I want self-enrolling enrollment or manual? Do I want to have full control or do I allow students to enroll themselves with the key, without the key? Okay. And then cohort, I can decide in advance. PayPal, do I want to charge money? Or course meta. Let's look at the course meta so you see how I brought you here. Okay, so I can take anyone from any course on the Moodle, choose a course, and bring them. Okay, so uh, who should I bring here? Uh, I don't want to bring anybody that I don't want to be here, but okay, let's uh, bring people from this course. Okay, so I click on the course, I add method. And then everybody who's in that course will, you see, will be, there are seven people, users in this course. They will get automatic enrollment. Okay, but I don't want this. I'll delete. Okay, there, I deleted it. Anything you do, you can delete. Just don't delete what somebody else does. Okay. Next, let's go into the manual so you see how this was done. I'm going to go into edit. Okay, I hope my voice is still going. It better be. Okay, and then I can enable. Yes, no. Don't forget the question marks that give you information. And then I can decide on the role. Do I want the enrollers to be non-editing teachers, teacher with editing rights, or managers with lots of rights? 
And then how long do I want them to be here? I can decide. Zero means indefinite. Do I want to I notify them before they get kicked out? Because Moodle will kick them out when they expire. Okay, and then I save. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Okay, and of course, uh, self-enrollment. Let me show you what a self-enrollment looks like. That's the most useful one, unless you're working for uh, an organization that charges money. Here I give it a name, so I'll call it test, and then enable other people who have already enrolled, on the, enrolled in the website. Yes, we have accounts. Allow new enrollments. Yes. And then I can add a key here, and the key will be yes, yeah, well, whatever you want it to be. The best key is the one that has numbers, words, and so on. Now here, this is the important part. Do I want to use group enrollment? Yes. Okay, remember we want to have groups. Yes. And then Moodle Manager, what do I want them to have? I want them to be managers. Okay, and then how long do I want them to be? When do I want them to start? And then I can also add a welcome. Okay, so that's it. Of course, I didn't do that. Okay, that was just to show you. Okay, so we're here. Now let me go back to class to make sure that I have sound. I do. Okay, so I can continue. Um, now let's go into notice I'm in administration. You didn't believe me, right? Administration. But this is the forum administration. But it's still administration. Everything on Moodle is administration. Okay, keep that in mind. So I'm going to go to the breadcrumbs. This is where I am. Okay, at the far right, response area for blocks in Moodle task. And then week four, blocks on Moodle. And then here, okay, so where am I going? Uh, let's go back to Moodle MOOCs. Because I want to go back to the Moodle for managers. Okay, this is where I want to go. That's where I was, okay? Here there are also breadcrumbs. So now I'm going to go into, back into the users. And this time I want to show you something about uh, enrolling. Well, first we have to enroll. We have enrollees. I can also enroll people. Okay, I want to show you how that's done. Okay, these are the people that are in the course right now. Okay. And I want to enroll a new user. Okay, so I can do that because I'm the manager. You will be able to do it too. So you go into enroll, and this is what you do. How do you want to enroll people? As teachers or as managers? Or Moodle teachers have no rights as Moodle teachers. Okay, so I'll make the Moodle teachers, and then I'll find, uh, let's see, Mohammed. And I can enroll Muhammad there and then finish enrolling. But I don't want to do that. Okay. I don't want to do that. But you can do that and you can practice and document how you do it. Okay. You can also enroll cohort. Okay. See, I've got two cohorts here. But only the administrator of the whole Moodle can do that. And you can see these people here. Oh, there's Muhammad. Did I add Muhammad? I think that was a mistake. So let me delete that. Okay, there, I deleted Mohammed because he's not in our course. Okay, now notice here that teachers, everybody here has teacher rights. Okay, um, and this is how we give rights. Teacher and manager, but since this is manager, they should have manager rights, all right? But they won't get manager rights until week four. So no manager rights until week four, when everybody will get manager rights, okay, so that they can practice. Right now, you don't have any manager rights. Okay, so let's go back to um, groups. Okay, I can also create groups and then put people that I've enrolled in groups. So let me show you how that's done. Okay, I'm going to uh, create a group. I'm going to create automatic. I can create a group. And give it a name and then do it this way. Or I can make my life easy by creating an auto create group. 
and I'm going to put you in groups. And this is very useful because, as I said, some activities can be done in groups and others can be done with a whole class. So how many groups? The name will be group. I'll call the name MM4. Okay, that'll be the group. Okay, number of groups uh, or how many groups you want, or members per group. Okay, I want uh, 10 members per group. Okay, and um, what role do I want them to have? Okay, here you can decide what role you want them to have. I want them to have no role. Moodle teacher is no role. And select members from cohort. Uh, no. A allocate members alphabetically. How do I want them? Randomly, alphabetically. I think alphabetically is good. And then prevent last group, small group. Yes, I don't want to have a group of two people. Okay, so I'd rather have bigger. Okay, and then I click, I can preview and see what the mess I've caused. Okay, I can preview and here you can see everything. Okay, you can see MM4A and you can see all the people of the group. Okay, and then you can see the number of people in the groups. Okay, so this is a lot of fun. And then you can submit. I'm going to cancel because I don't want to do this. Okay, and that's how it's done. Very easy. You can also import groups by doing it manually. Okay, if you have a class where you can import the groups. So it's really, you can choose a file and do it automatically. Okay, and then um, you can work in the groups. You can play around with it. So now I'm on the group page. I can go to, okay, the course Moodle for Moodle. Uh, practice area. I thought I was in Moodle. I'm in the wrong place. Okay, I thought I was in the manager area, but doesn't matter. Here, I can also create grouping. Okay, and uh, this is a subgroup. You can divide the groups by creating grouping, and then you have like two different classes or three classes, and then you can group them within the groupings. Okay, so grouping is just another way of uh, subdividing the class and then grouping them within the groupies. Okay, so I'm, I see I'm in the wrong area. I'm in the Moodle practice area and I want it to be in the Moodle manager area. Okay, I think I created a sub group here, uh, if I'm not mistaken. There, you see I've organized them into groups. It's I haven't, it's the system. Now I want to add people. I want to add, so I go here, add, remove users. Okay, I'll go into a group, group A, and I want to add, this is a lot of work. It's better to do it automatically. Okay, there are too many users. Okay, so I'll just write a name, A, and then somebody will come up. Angelo, okay, so I add, let's say, how many do I want? One, two, three, four, five, add. It's so easy and so much fun there. Okay, they're there, back to groups, and then I'll do the next one. Okay, you see, group A has five people, these people. Okay, now I can remove them. Okay, so let's remove them because I'm just practicing. Okay, that's the point. So I click on all their names, and then you see the remove, remove, and everybody's removed. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to practice back to groups. You're going to group everybody, document by using Screencast-O-Matic, document the process, and that's how you'll get it, okay? And feel free to make mistakes. Just uh, only delete your work, okay? So uh, there we are. That's under users. Let's go back to class and see if there are any questions. All right, so that was a lot of work. Okay, a lot of work. I hope you're able to uh, get something out of it. If not, you'll see the recordings and, of course, YouTube, because that's where this is going. So any questions so far from what you saw, I'm going to go through this very slowly on the PowerPoint. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's raining. Rain is nice, but uh, I know the Internet goes bad in Italy when it rains. In other places too, but not everywhere. Okay.
not for the internet. Okay, so again, administration. All right, so let's see if you got it. What does administration mean? Of course. Of course. Does it mean that you're the administrator of the whole Moodle? Does it mean that you are uh, the boss of everything? What does it mean? Okay? Administration. It means that you have some rights, and even students have rights. They have the right to see their grade. They have a right to see their reports, what they're doing. They have a lot of rights. So administration means whatever rights you have in that course, in the course. It's always course-based. Okay? Your profile is administration, too, and you have a right to edit your profile. That's administration, too. So I want you to pay attention to administration in your account and in the courses that you're in okay administration and then you'll see what's under your administration and then as Tom says you'll see whether you have a long list or a short list a lot of things or not that much okay so course administration you can turn editing on if you're a teacher you can edit the settings but we're going to users and uh, some teachers can have the right to bring users, but usually you have to be a manager of a course, a course. Okay, so we go into users and I showed you. You can enroll users, but before you enroll them, you might want to decide on the system. What type of enrollment do you want? That's right, Tom. That's why the thumbs was down. My question was, are they the administrators of a whole Moodle? And of course, the answer is no. Okay, you can be administ administrator of a book activity, <laughs> which is okay. So everything has administration, enrollment methods, groups, and we didn't talk about permissions. We'll talk about permissions. So you can choose one of these methods, self-enrollment, cohort sync, which the administrator of the Moodle decides, like all the facilitators of a Moodle or all the teachers, you decide how you want to organize a cohort, PayPal, or course meta link. Now, which of these did I use for the Moodle for beginners or Moodle for non beginners? Which of these did I use for the Moodle for beginners or Moodle for non beginners? That's a catchy question. Let's see if you have the answer. Yes, cohort could be anything, and I'll show you the cohort uh, when we talk about the admin of a Moodle, a whole Moodle, okay, uh, Jarek. So which one did I use to enroll you? Which system of enrollment did I use for Moodle for beginners and Moodle for non-beginners? Which of these methods did I use from what you've seen? in the screenshots. Okay, one, two, three, or four. Well, we'll start with elimination. Did you have to pay money? Did you pay? So it's not PayPal. Um, are you a cohort as a group? No. Did you enroll by yourself or were you enrolled automatically? Exactly. Self-enrollment. That's right. You enrolled by yourself. Did you have a key of enrollment? Sometimes I do that, but I didn't. You didn't have a key of enrollment, so it was pretty easy. Right? No key. So that's self-enrollment. You have to be careful with that. You don't want the whole world to join your courses. But, uh, okay, you have to be careful so you don't get shady people coming in there. So sometimes it's a good idea to have a key of enrollment. Okay, next, feel free to ask questions as we go. Every question is brilliant. Okay, because it forces me to think and helps you. All right, so what did I use for the Moodle for um, managers and Moodle practice area? Which of the enrollment methods did I use 
for Moodle for Managers and Moodle for Moodle Practice area, where you are managers and teachers of a course. Which one of these did I use? Did you enroll by yourself in Moodle for Managers or Moodle for Moodle Practice area? Did you enroll by yourself? If you look at your profile, you'll see that you are enrolled in the courses, but you didn't enroll yourself. It was done automatically, okay, which means this is called course meta. Okay, you probably missed this, this when I was uh, screen sharing. It's called meta. Okay, meta means it's automatic. Okay, I, the teacher or the manager, whoever, is the one that decides how to what course to use for the meta okay so you can choose any of these methods what method is not here okay what method is is missing there's a method missing here that I talked about oops and it's what method is missing yeah meta is automatic it means that I can take people from an existing course and Moodle will transfer them automatically and enroll them in another course. Uh, no, grouping is not a method of enrollment. It's a, it's a way of dividing the class. It's a user system, but not enrollment. Okay, but that's very good. That's a good point, Rosie. So what's missing? Remember the... Um, attention blinks I'm asking you to look here so what are you missing yeah there's a blink I'm asking you to look here and tell me what's missing so your eyes are focusing here right but the answer is somewhere else yes where's the answer see I'm asking you to focus here but the answer is that's right so what's the answer Don't look here. If you want to find the answer, you have to take your eyes away from here. And you have to bring them. Another method of enrollment. We're talking about method of enrollment. So another method of enrollment. Let's see who will get it. We're looking for a method of enrollment. How can we enroll? We can enroll self-enroll. Um, PayPal. Course med. Very good, Kirsten. You got it. It's right here. You see, that's that's the attention blink that I was telling you about that everybody has. And your students do too. So when we tell our students, focus here, focus here, look here, what's missing, they're not seeing the whole picture. They're not looking to the right. They're only focusing here. Okay? That's attention blink. When we are asked to look at one place, we miss something else. Okay, think of this when you're driving to. Okay, and that's why there are accidents, by the way, because of attentional blinks. You blink a lot. <laughs> you wink. All right, so yes, manual. Okay, manual is there too. All right, so let's take a look at manual enrollments. And I showed you this in the screenshots. So if you miss the screen sharing, you'll get it now. So here I have two users that I've added manually. And notice I can move this up and down. There's guests that I've made hidden and I can delete manual I would never delete manual I can hide it I can add people to help me and that's it okay so this is what it looks like when I want to um, enroll okay using the manual method and I showed you this as well before something about the slide is kind of weird um, so the question marks is where you will be able to ask. You don't have to remember anything on Moodle. Of course, you've got the question marks that'll give you the information. Okay, so this is the form for manual. Okay, and now groups. Okay, groups. Why is that twice? Groups. Okay, now I can also create grouping. A weeping angel. <laughs> Blink again. Um, 
Okay, grouping is, as I said, it's a, a way to divide the class, the whole class, and then have groups within the groupings. Okay, it's not used that much, but you could have it, say, divide the class into boys and girls, for example, divide the class into male and female. Okay, so you have grouping for male and grouping for female. And then you group all the females into different groups, and then you group all the males separately. Okay, so that's... Or you can have uh, a class with uh, teachers and principals. So you divide the class into principals and into teachers, and then you group them. You can mix the groups, or you can have separate groups. Okay, so I created an English language teachers group. So I can divide who's an English language teacher in this uh, in this particular class today. Um, if you can give me a thumbs up, are you an English language teacher? If you're not, thumbs down so we can see how many. Oh yeah, you could do that too. <laughs> sure, Burnett's dark hair. Yeah, but that could be uh, problematic. Okay, so we've got uh, everybody is. Hello, Mark. Everybody is except for Kirsten. Is that right? What about the rest of you? Are you an English language teacher? Is everybody an English language teacher here? Grouping is a class. Yes, it is. It's a class within a course. And you can have two classes, three classes, and then you can group them. Okay? Um, but you don't... I would say most teachers don't use this. Um, but it's a possibility. Okay, so you can divide uh, if you've got thousands and thousands of tubes. Okay, let me show you how to group. I've got nine members of a class, nine students, and I want to divide them. Remember I showed you this? So I take group A and I move them. And if I want to remove, and that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be practicing, creating, and then removing. Okay, and then you'll see the numbers. Okay, this is done automatically, but you can also not call it group. You can call it MM4. Anything else you'd like to call it? The group. If you go into create group, you get a chance to give it a name. So MM4, and then it would be MM4A, or you can have MM41, or you can have MM, or I don't know, you can have something else. You could have... Uh, I don't know, whatever you want, three, four, three, four, one, or three, four, A, three, four, B. Ah, Moodlers, that's a good one, Nevis. Okay, so Moodlers, Moodlers one, or Moodlers A, and that could be the group. So when you do it, uh, you'll have a chance to do this. By the way, I want to remind you that uh, the course, actually, you can work until July 31st. So feel free to take things at your own pace. Don't rush. Okay, but just keep in mind that um, you don't have to rush. Okay, July 31st. Yes, Nevis. Okay, so uh, this is how we can add or remove users from groups, and we can create groups and auto-create. I love the auto-create, okay, because it really helps. Now, what happens if somebody joins the course? Do they, if it's auto, create groups? Do you know what happens? If, for example, 10 people join your course, and then 10 more, and then 10 more, what happens every time somebody joins the, uh, the course? Groups in the course. Do they get left out? If it's automatic, create groups. They get into the groups. That's right, automatically they're placed in a group, whether according to alphabetical order, or whether according to whatever you decide, okay? Random. But if you do not have auto-create, you have to do it all the time. And that's a lot of work, and you want to make your life easy. So auto-group is great. Okay, now if you want to give a name, this is where you do it. You go to general, group name, you give it a name, and then you can give a description if you want. Okay, now, look, any questions so far before we get into the breadcrumbs? Uh, I finished talking about groups. Any questions about groups? Yes, they're automatically added. Every time somebody joins your course, they're automatically 
uh, placed in a group, which makes life so easy. You can have a group ID number. That's right. Uh, the ID, yeah, in, in Moodle, everything has an ID. A course can have an ID. A group has an ID. Everything has an ID. You're referring to this, of course, right? ID, yes. Kirsten, I'm glad you noticed. Very good. Every group has an ID. Every course has an ID. Every book has an ID. Everything in Moodle has IDs. The, if you go, you'll see this. If you go as a teacher, um, you'll see it. But if when you go as a manager, you'll get a lot of information. A lot of information. And uh, you don't get this information anywhere on any Moodle training site. So take the opportunity to check it out. Okay, breadcrumbs. If you get hungry, <laughs> it should be chocolate and, and not bread, right? But breadcrumbs. You always go from the right. Okay, always from the right. It's the trail, that's right. The trail you took. That's right. That's why it starts from left to right. That's the logic. Very good, Nevis. You got it. That's right. Because we start home, and then we go to my courses, and then Moodle MOOCs, and then I'm in Moodle for man, um, Moodle MOOC 4, Moodle for Managers. I'm in the users, and under users is groups. So if you want to go back, this is where you are. And then if you want to go back, you go back from right to left. Now, as I said, you can also import groups, so you can choose a file. You can arrange the groups on a file, okay? And then uh, Moodle will group it for you, Hans and Gretel. That's why, that's why I thought of chocolates. But they didn't use chocolates, did they? Because chocolates would melt, but it would be tasty. Okay, so enrolled users. Looks like the slide... Does the slide look right to you because on my, maybe because my page is small. Okay, so you've got enroll users. And what do you do when you see enroll users? You click. This is a manual way of enrolling users. Okay, so this is manual. Okay, it's a manual way of enrolling users. That's why you should never delete it. Okay, if you ever are... Uh, the manager of a course, do not delete manual. Okay, so this is manual. Let me make it larger. Manual. Okay. This is manual enrollment. Okay, there, manual enrollment. What was I missed? I missed the, uh, the breadcrumbs. Yes, it's not the owner so much um, as as uh, Martin Dogeyama says. He didn't do very much. He just started it. It's a lot of people around the globe, you know, from every country possible, that uh, gave these funny names. Because actually, Martin Dogeyama should be ashamed of himself. If it was him because Martin uh, was involved in education, and it's um, you know it's pretty enroll. It's pretty funny to call it breadcrumbs, but I think others use the same term. Now, I want to remind you, document, document, document. Okay, whatever you do, document your work. Go out with a screen, with Screencast-O-Matic. Don't leave your house without Screencast-O-Matic. Don't go anywhere without Screencast-O-Matic. Okay, really, really important. Okay, And a lot of people who are involved in development are not educators, they're not language teachers. So they use all kinds of terms. I have no idea where it's coming from. Strange terms, okay? So uh, we can't do anything, it's too late. They didn't involve us. Um, all right, so let's take a look at um, what we have here. Enroll users. Notice what's under this arrow. You tell me. What's in this menu? What's in the menu? What's in the menu? Anybody? The role you have? It's the role, you're right, Rosie. That's correct. It's the role. But for what? Be more specific. 
Thank you, Mark. Roles of the students. No, they're not roles of the students. Well, they could be, yes, definitely. They could be roles of the students, but they're the roles that you want to give your users. Do you want to give them any role? No. Do you want to make them a manager? Think about it. Do you want to make them a teacher? Okay, so it's up to you. It's the users. That's right. The roles that you want to give your users. And this is a reminder to make the most of your editor. You've got an incredible editor in Moodle. You know, you can copy and paste anything in this area. Do you realize that? With links and everything, you don't have to hyperlink, you just paste it. Uh, Moodle now is just amazing. This is the editor uh, writing area, and you just paste it there, whether it's a link, anything. Try it, <laughs> okay? The only thing you have to hyperlink is uh, video, YouTube videos or Vimeos, hyperlink it. And, and that's it, actually. Okay, everything else, you just paste it, if you have it, something to paste. So make the most, use the mic. Poodle works. I had Justin do some work because I, I was a chipmunk for a while there. So uh, uh, Justin fixed it. Justin's going to be speaking about Poodle. So get the Poodle, get the microphone and talk, get the video and talk, use all these features. They're wonderful. And document, of course. Whatever you do, document. And you'll be able to use this with your students, too. So whatever you're learning is not only for you, it's going to be for others. And more importantly, don't forget to save. Save. Otherwise, it won't be there. Don't tell me I put it there and it's gone. It's gone because you didn't save it. Okay? And don't forget to do whatever is required. Document and share. And don't forget to reflect. Reflecting is another aspect of uh, this MOOC. Okay, there are 10 right now. And again, as I said, um, two a week, I think, would work it uh, so that uh, you finish by the end of July. So two a week, I think we'll make it two and a half a week. Uh, so tell me how you're doing. Oh, you are, Jarek. Wow, that's fantastic. Keep going. You'll get the hang of it, and it'll become a lot easier than you may have thought. And that's it. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining the MOOC and uh, this extra session that I've added. Next time, I'm going to add it. I'm going to add all these uh, sessions to the uh, Moodle MOOC, to Moodle MOOC uh, 5. So we'll have a lot of Moodle sessions, even more. Ah, the Google Calendar, yes. I added, uh, you're right. If you copy the chat, uh, you should be able to get the presentations. Let's see if I can get them here. The presentations, yep, I got it. There are the presentations. I also mentioned what's coming up. Okay, and we've got some really exciting ones coming up this, uh, this week, notice. Um, there's Ludmilla, Vicky, Joel, uh, Justin, Rosemary, and Jason R. Levine. So uh, just to give you a collage here, look at how many presenters this week. Okay, so we've got tomorrow with Ludmilla, Vicky, uh, Rosemary, Justin, and Jason R. Levine. We had someone else that was scheduled for today, but he um, postponed it to June 29, and that's uh, Lenander from uh, Guyana. Today's Father's Day. Is it Father's Day where you are? Uh, let me know in the chat if it's Father's Day. Is it Father's Day? Looks like the... Uh, is it Father's Father's Day? Yes. Okay. So happy Father's Day. So Len's wife prepared something special and she didn't know about his presentation. So that's why he asked to postpone this because um, his wife prepared a surprise. So uh, I think his first son uh, was just born too. So thank you and happy Father's Day. We had Father's Day already last week. All right. So I guess it's the month of, for the fathers. The month of June is Father's Month. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. 
and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Have uh, a wonderful uh, Sunday and a great week.